Which uh, homologous series is this? Is that among the three? Huh? Uh, it must have another C there. Yes. Which one? Alkyne. Eh? Why are you saying alkyne? Guys, when you find this and you can't know it exactly, expand it. And then C, CH, because this one is CH3. You have there, you have there. Now, a bond goes here, isn't it? But here I don't have hydrogen, you see? Even the next, I don't have hydrogen. And then the last one I have, CH, and then three hydrogens. Are you seeing? Mm -hmm. If I have, I have no hydrogen here, what does it mean? It means that I have to make sure that there are four bonds. So I have, for this one is one, two. So I have to add another one. One, two, three, not yet four. I have to add another one. One, two, three, four. So, one, two, three, four. You see? Now, it means that the structure looks like this. Now, you ask yourself, the one which has a triple bond is an alkyne. Why am I uh, doing this is because of the... Sorry? Good morning, ma'am. I'm okay. So, what I was saying... Uh, last time they brought this question, and I saw that many people uh, failed this question. If the question is like this, CH3, ne? CH, CH2, ne? CH2, 2, ne? CH3. What does it mean if it's like that? Remember in most cases we say that when something is in the bracket, it means a branch. But it depends on whether it's a branch. When, when does it become a branch? If you look at this, is this a branch? If you expand it to be like this, the structure formula, you'll find out that this is not a branch. Due to the number of carbon atoms, and the number of hydrogens attached. Let's expand it and we find out if it is a branch. CH3. CH3, isn't it? CH2. This one is there too, isn't it? Now, this here, it is having already two carbons. Sorry, two hydrogens. And one hydrogen. Another bond is gonna be joining, is gonna be joining another carbon. You understand? So you have one, two, three, four. So it can't be a branch. If it was a branch here, this would have been one carbon. So that now another carbon atom is down. But now because they, they are two, two hydrogens, therefore it can't be a branch because already the carbon atom has taken all the four bonds. It cannot have more than four. Therefore, the first bond is going to be joining this, this carbon, which is, again, CH2. But they are saying that this carbon is times 2. I think. So it's going to become, again, CH2. So it means that now I've written this. It was just compressed a bit. And then now it's going to have CH, uh, CH3, which is hydrogen. Ah, are you saying? When does it become a side branch, a side group, or a side molecule? Let me give you the same example. Yes. If it's like this, it's not a branch. It's not a branch. Why? Because if you try to expand it, if you try to expand it, it won't have um, a, a room for the carbon atom to for the carbon atom to what to expand. To expand on it. It won't have that room for the carbon atom to, to do what? To, to, to attach itself. Because the carbon atom is always having, already having four carbon 
four bonds already is full. It cannot have more than four uh, bonds. Now, now let's look at, uh, at another example and then we see when does it become a branch. Yes, because now if you, I put here the two hydrogen atoms, ne? Yeah. it will have one, two, three, four bonds. Now, where is the branch going to go? So it is just an extension. Now, look at this. Look at this. It's the same thing, but I've reduced the number of carbon atoms. Sorry, the number of uh, hydrogen atoms. Now, let's write it uh, in the structure formula. CH3. I see. Now let's go to this. C, it's only having one hydrogen. I see. But another bond must be linked to another carbon atom. We're going to find out whether it's this or this. This This one, the next one, it has three, three of them. Therefore, if it was two, then it would have been a double bond. But because there are three, it means that if I put the three here, this carbon atom is going to be full. There is no way how I can put it up on there. I think. Therefore, it means that this is a branch. Therefore, this one, you see that there is a room for another bond. So that bond is going to be for this, this uh, which is in the brackets. Whereby, I'm going to have that, the first carbon atom, but, but they say that it is times two. This one has two hydrogen, but they say that t t times two. Ne? Um, okay, there is something which is missing here. Ne? Yeah. There is something which is missing here. Okay, L let me just say, uh, let me just use that. So it means that, uh, look, it means that now this is a branch of this. I think. So it means that now I have one, one, two, three, four. Done. One, two, three, four. I think done. One, two, three, four. Done. Now this one, because it's in the brackets, you said that if it is in the brackets, it will only be a side group if you see that the number of hydrogens they are missing. There is one, at least one hydrogen. If it is one, you see that there is one hydrogen which is missing on this. And if you try to put a double bond, the next carbon atom is already full. Therefore, it means that that becomes a what? A side group. Are we together? Yeah, please. Uh, they brought this question in the um, previous uh, paper, and most of the kids, they did not find it uh, correct. Because they saw that whatever it is in the brackets, it is a branch. But it's only a branch if the number of hydrogen are less. Then it becomes a side group. Any question there? Yes. Where? The first Oh, the first example. If now I have a two, now it depends. Ne? For example, if I have a two here, ne? You mean this one? If I have a two here, yes. I have a two outside the bracket. Now, so now if it is, no, the two inside, it, it was a small mistake, ne? It was just a small mistake. Why? Uh, because the number of carbon atom, each carbon atom is supposed to have four. So it was short with the one carbon, ne? You understand? Mm. No. No. Why? He's saying that what if it is like this and one hydrogen is absent here, one carbon atom be, to be a part of main chain and then another to become the side group. Remember that the side group, the second one will also have two, 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 two hydrogen instead of three. 
therefore it will be shot with one, one, one hydrogen. So it means that it can't be, unless it is within the main chain, but the moment is a side group, if it is like this, then it means that the number of carbon atoms here are going to reduce. So that now, it's like this now. It means that now I have one carbon here and I have another, another side group this side. Are you seeing? So that when you count, one, two, three, four. So one CH3 is here and another CH3 is that side. Is it clear? Yes. So, so uh, the number of hydrogen, they are a very important factor to determine the kind of structure you're going to write. That's why we are saying that if you write a structure and this structure does not have maximum, maximum number of hydrogen, then it means that that structure is not correct. Is it clear? Yeah. Let's continue. So I think um, um, naming these uh, organic structures, you are fine. Let's just, let me just write one structure here and you label it for me. And then also write another structure, an, a name, and then you draw it for me. Then once I see that you have got it, then we continue. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Sorry? Oh, she's asking which homologous series do I belong? Because this is a single bond throughout. It's going to be alkane. Even this one is single bond throughout. It's going to be alkane. Isn't it? Okay. Since we wrote this, this one is simple. So, so Let's. Uh -huh, this one is alkyne because it has a triple bond in between. Let's just label this instead of writing another structure. Let's label this. Uh huh. Who can label this for me? The name. The name, IPAC name. Uh -huh. Where's the main chain? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So everything is one, two, three. So you just have to choose. So if you make this one a main chain, one, two, three. So huh? it's going to be? It's going to be? One, two, three is what? Prop. Prop. But it is an alkane. So it's going to become? Propane, ne? All right, and then uh -huh, the side group, side group is we have on number two, and also have on number two, isn't it? So it's gonna be what is the side group? Is it ethyl, methyl, propyl? What is it? Methyl. Why are you saying it's methyl? One, because meth means what? Means one. Meth means what? One. So it's going to become meth. But when you add YL, it means a side group. So it becomes methyl. But this is on which is on which carbon atom? It's one, two. So it is on carbon atom number two. Is it clear? The first methyl is carbon atom number two. The second methyl is on carbon atom number what? Number two. So it's going to become two comma two because there are two methyl, two is di. Ne? So it becomes, remember, a figure and a figure, we separate it with a dash. A figure and a letter, we separate it with, sorry, a figure and a figure, we separate it with a comma. And then um, a figure and a letter, we separate it with what? A dash. So it's going to become two comma two dash di methyl propane. Is it clear? Two, two, di, methyl, propane. So now they can bring this name and ask you to draw the structure. Yes. Still, it is simple. It is simple. How is it simple? I told you that when you, they bring such and you want to draw a structure, we are just doing this to remind you and to minimize the time of you revising. Yeah, th th that's all is we're supposed to do. Ne? Now, if they bring this, ne? you start with the main chain. Is it clear? You write it. They are saying propane. 
When you say propane, it means that there is no double bond, there is no triple bond anywhere. So it's going to be prop is three. Isn't it? So one, two, three. That's the first step when you are writing it. Uh -huh. They say that you have the first side group on carbon atom number two and the second side group on carbon atom number two. So it means that this is a side group and this is a side group. Is it clear? So which side group we have? A methyl. A methyl has one carbon atom. And also a, another methyl has also one carbon atom. What is left? We have talked about this. We have talked about this. We have talked about this. Now the rest is bond and you put the bonds and the hydrogens. Done. Remember that each carbon atom is supposed to have four. Four what? Four bonds. There are four. I'm going to do. 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 Ah, uh, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Don't miss out, ne? Because if you miss out, you miss out the mark. The structure is done. We are back from where we came from. So, as simple as that. Come here. Any question? All right. I think uh, that's alkane, alkene, and alkynes. Uh, just I want to ask you one question. This kind of uh, homologous series, it belongs to these three homologous series. They belong to a group of molecules called hydrocarbons. What are hydrocarbons? What are hydrocarbons? <laughs> These are molecules which are made up of carbon and hydrogen only. They're saying hydro, hydro from hydrogen, hydrocarbons. It means that it is made up of hydrogen and carbons only. Only. You want to see that word only? Ne? It's made up of hydrogen and carbons only. Another thing. Before we shift uh, from this, when you do combustion, you know combustion. What does it mean? Burn. When you burn it in 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 air, yes. In the presence of oxygen, you produce. You always produce two products. You always produce two products. Is it clear? What are those two products? What are those two products? When you burn hydrocarbons, hydrogen and the carbon, how do you, uh, what are those two products? Huh? Uh -huh. Carbon dioxide and what? And carbon monoxide, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Tokero? H2O. H2O and carbon dioxide. Guys, those are the only products you produce. Okay, you, you produce heat, but we don't include the heat in the equation. We can say delta H, and then it is it's an exothermic reaction. Yes? But whenever, whether you burn alkane, whatever molecule, whether you burn alkene, whatever molecule, when you, buy, uh, you burn alkane, whatever molecule, the product is one. Hydrogen, uh, sorry, water plus carbon dioxide. Nothing else. So when they say, they bring it, you have burnt combustion of hydrocarbon. Guys, don't think. The answer is one. You don't need to think. Product is water plus carbon dioxide. That's one mark you have got. The second mark is going to be on balancing. Now the balancing is going to, uh, yeah. For this ones, sometimes they disturb. You understand? But if you see that the balancing is a problem, leave it. Go to another question. Put a star there. Go to another question. Finish other questions, you come back. Don't sleep in exam. Please. Litabo, don't sleep. You are sleeping on your marks. You understand? So, after that, you come back, and then you do what? You do the balancing. Sister, is it together? Are we together? Mm -hmm. Are we done with this now? Now, it means that now, this one, this 
molecules at least if they bring any question you're gonna kill it isn't it okay one last question yes one last question now it means now we are phrasing we are combining all of them remind me what are isomers what are isomers hey <laughs> what are isomers and you're gonna tell me the different types of isomers with examples you can't go to exam without knowing isomers. Impossible. What are isomers? What are isomers? He doesn't. <laughs> it's somewhere there. We want it in your head, you not somewhere there. Yes. Molecules with the same. Same molecular formula, but different structure formula. We call them isomers. Ne? Okay. Yeah, same molecular formula, but different. Look at this. CH3, CH2, CH2, ne? CH2, CH3. Ne? I sing it. Now, what I'm gonna do? One, two, three, four, five. Ne? One, two, three, four, five. How many common atoms are there? Five. C five. five. Two, three, plus two. Five. Plus two. Plus two. Plus two. Plus three. Twelve. Structure. This is the molecular formula. Isn't it? This is the molecular formula. Then they ask you, write down different isomers of this. So what do you do? What do you do? Remember, when you go back to your formula, how do you know that this is alkene, this is alkene, this is alkyne? When you go back to your formula, general formula, you'll find out that if you say C is 5, ne? Ne? H is supposed to be is supposed to be two times the figure which is here, which is five. Ne? Plus two. Are you saying? So it's gonna be five is five. This one is gonna be ten plus two. Plus two, which gives me twelve. It means that the hydrogen is at twelve. Don't you see that? So if it diverts, it means that that's not alkane. But now because this 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 obeys this then it means that this is an this is an alkene. So it means that when you are drawing the structure formula there is no double bond triple bond anywhere. So sir with isomers it, it depends on your formula that you have formulated it has carbon to alkene. Yeah, alkene alcohols uh, carboxylic acids it can be anything. You understand? But I'm just bring it here so that when we reach there now it's a little bit simpler for us. Ne? Okay, now, if they write it like this, the first, this is the condensed structure. Ne? But how do we change this to become an isomer? Create a side group. You understand? How do I create a side group? Make sure the number of hydrogen do, do, they don't change and number of carbons they don't change. For example, one, two, three, four, five. What if I say one, two, three, four? I put the five there. Put hydrogens. If we count the hydrogens here, there are 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I see. How many carbons? One, two, three, four, five. You see? This is an isomer of that. What about I put say one, two, three? Three, ne? Four, five. When you count them, we will find out that it is twelve hydrogen. Let's count: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What is missing? Where is it? 
Yeah, uh -huh, here. Twelve. I, I, I skipped it. So there are twelve. So, so you don't have the problem. No, we are counting only where hydrogen goes. You understand? I'm only counting where hydrogen goes. Because the hydrogen can't go here. It's already carbon, carbon. So you see that the hydrogen are 12 now. If you count the carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Series 5. So this is an isomer of this. Still, this is an isomer of this. Because this is straight chain, but this is branched chain. I think. So that's how you write these uh, isomers. They can ask you, give you one molecule, and then ask you to write the isomer. In most cases, this is a, a chain isomer. It's the same uh, molecular formula, but the chain is changing. The, 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 the substituents are changing. The position, the side group, they have a side group. The position of the side group is what? Is changing on the what? On the chain. You understand? <laughs> Remind me the different types of isomers. Chain, chain isomer. Functional isomer, positional isomer. Then you remind me the definition for each. Uh huh. Some functional groups, same molecular formula, but different functional groups, and then the chain. Different functional group. They all have same molecular formula. Just change the different chains, different functions. I I I gave you a a simple definition, a simple uh, way how you remember. They start with the same definition, same molecular formula. But if it is, it is a functional isomer, then the function is going to be what? Be changing. You understand? Positional isomer, same molecular formula, but different position. You understand? Yes. So, so, so that's how you're supposed to define it. But the problem will come with the examples. Functional isomer, different functional groups. What does it mean? For example, same molecular formula. This will apply with the esters and the carboxylic acid. They have the same molecular formula. But what changes is the functional group. The other one is having the functional group uh, as an ester, while the other one has the functional group of, as a what? A carboxylic acid. Is it clear? Ah, oh, people are forgetting. People are what? People are forgetting. All right, let's let, let's look at it. Ne? Uh, let's look at it. Guys, you can't go to the exam without knowing these simple, simple things. You understand? You can't. There is no way you can go to the exam without knowing these simple, simple things. All right. Let's look at it. Let's give an example of uh, a carboxylic acid. Ne? A carboxylic acid. A carboxylic acid, remember it has its functional group at the end. We don't have, we don't have to mention the position of, uh, of, of, of the functional group on the carboxylic acid. We cannot mention the, the position of the functional group on aldehydes. You understand? So, for example, 1, CH3, CH2, COO. That's the carboxylic acid. This carboxylic acid is what? 1, 2, 3. So it's going to become propanoic acid. Is it clear? Yes, it's propanoic. 1, 2, 3. It's going to become propanoic acid. Now, if I want to make it an ester, I have to put this in the middle. But you'll find out that it has the same number of carbon, same number of hydrogen. Therefore, it becomes a functional isomer. You understand? Ah, for example, let's do it. CH3 C Yeah, I'm writing now ester. Yes. I'm making it an ester. Now it is an ester. Let's count the number of hydrogen. And then we see if we, if we put the bonds, they're going to fit when we expand it. <laughs> One, two, three. Carbon is three. One, two, three. Done. Uh -huh. Hydrogen. Six. Three. Six. I think 
This is a carboxylic acid. This is an ester. But are you sure that the number of, of bonds are fitting on these structures? Let's see it. CH3, remember each carbon is supposed to have, is supposed to have how many bonds? Four. If you exceed four, or oh, less than four, zero. CH3, this is a three, ne? This is two, ne? Then carbon, carbon, this oxygen. How is this oxygen? It has a double bond there, and then it has that there. So that this carbon, this is like that. You understand? And then this oxygen is here. I think, therefore, it's going to be one, two, three. Ah, I see. So it is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, done. One, two, three, four, done. One, two, three, four, done. Oxygen is supposed to have two. One, two, done. So it means that it fits. What about this? Hey, now the problem is here. Let's look at it. C, is CH3, isn't it? Huh? Uh huh. What about here? C. C uh huh. Double bond, oxygen, and then uh huh. Or now this is not hydrogen. Now it is a carbon. I see. But this carbon has three. I see. Done. One two three four. Done. One two done. One two three four. Done. One two three four. Done. So this is a carboxylic acid, while this one is an ester. What is the difference? Here the functional group is at the end. Here the functional group is along the chain. Is it clear? Yes. If you write the, the molecular formula, it's the same. So the same molecular formula, but different functional groups. You understand? Different what? Functional groups. Yes. Yes. When it is, it may not be actually middle, but it must be along the molecule. It must not be at the end. Then it's going to become an ester. It must not be in the middle at all. It must be at the end or at the beginning. I don't know whether it's the end or what is the beginning. When you say this is your beginning, it's fine. Because you can also swap, swap it and then it starts from the side. It still is fine. You understand? Yes. So if it's at the end, it is carboxylic acid. If it is along the molecule, it is an ester. The same thing, carbonyl compound work. Remember carbonyl compounds? We have ketones and aldehydes. If it is in the middle, can I rub off? If it is in the middle, if it is in the middle, then it becomes... It becomes keton. If it is um, uh, on the side, it becomes aldehyde. For example, uh -huh. C H three C. C H three. Let me put the O there. Ne? CH3, C, H2, C, ah. This is an aldehyde. This is a ketone. If we try to expand it, we shall see that the number of carbons are, all of them, they have four bonds. But this one only has one oxygen. Let's look at it. CH3 double bond that is a ketone I think well this one CH eh no man I see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You see? So this one is a ketone. This one is an aldehyde. So it's also another example of a functional isomer. There is also another functional isomer, but we don't study it. That is alcohol and ethers. We don't study ethers, but we study alcohols. So we can't talk about ethers because uh, we don't study ethers. But it's also another functional isomer. Is it clear? I think um, I've exhausted that part. Let's go now to alcohols in detail. Let's look at what? Alcohols. If you have any question before we go, please you ask. Ne? Huh? She's asking me, are we not going to do examples of positional isomers? And what? Chain isomer, we saw them on, on, on alkenes. Yes. But positional isomer, still, we can talk about it when you go to alcohols. Remember, alcohols, alcohols, they are grouped into three classes. The first class is primary alcohol. The second class is secondary alcohol. The third class is tertiary alcohol. Is it clear? Okay. You remind me ne, to talk about the positional isomer. Ne? Yeah. How do you write the, the, the general formula for alcohols? C N H 2 N plus 1 O H. Yes. Now, instead of saying plus 2, the hydrogen is being replaced, replaced by OH. Is it clear? Yes. Actually, alcohols, they are a little bit the same as alkenes. The only difference is, because also these ones are single bonds throughout. The only difference which is there is the OH here, while in alkenes, there is no OH. Is it clear? Yes. Hey, by the way, I forgot to talk about that um, alkene, alkene, alkynes, sometimes we call them paraffins. Ne? Yes, when you talk about paraffins, we are talking about that homologous series. Ne? Yes, those are the paraffins we use. Uh -huh. We said that we have the primary alcohol. Primary alcohol, this is the type of alcohol whereby we can define it into two ways. Ne? Either in terms of uh, hydrogen on the carbon atom with the functional group, yes, or carbon atoms attached to the carbon atom with the functional group. How many hydrogens are attached to the carbon atom with the functional group? Or how many carbon atoms are attached on the, uh, on the, on the what? On the... Um, Carbon atom with a functional group. Okay, let me write, let me give you an example here, and then you will see what I'm talking about so that you remember. Ne? Let me say I have a primal alcohol. And this primal alcohol, CH3, CH2, CH2. Ne? I'm gonna use the same molecule to find out which one is the primal alcohol, which one is the secondary alcohol. CH2 or H. Is it clear? Is it clear? That's the primary alcohol. Secondary alcohol. CH3, CH2. Ne? Should I use that technique of the brackets or I should expand it? Bracket. CH, CH. Let me say CH. CH three. Let me just say no, no three. Three there. CH three. 
CH two or H? Oh, with the carbon atom. This is the now. Um, I don't know whether you see it. Let me write it. CH3. C no, I want to make it clear for you. Ne? I want to make it clear for you. One, two. Three. Ne? One, two, three, four. CH3. That's a secondary alcohol. I think. Eh? Now, I'm going to expand it so that you see it clearly. Ne? Then the third one is going to be CH3. Ne? C. Ne? Ne? No, man. One is a primary, one is a secondary, one is a tertiary. This is primary, this is secondary, this is tertiary. Now, let me draw it there. I expand it so that you see it clearly. Ne? Why am I saying primary, secondary, and tertiary? We can bring it like this. Ne? So, when I'm writing, this one is simple. Everything is fine. Ne? The, the OH is at the end. But here... This is where I want. You understand? Okay, let me expand it. CH. Like that. I'm only going to write, okay? Let me write them so that you don't say that I didn't write them. You know, when, when you write something, even the students, they will write it in exam. If it is a little bit, you want to do it a shortcut. They will do the same thing in exam. They will do the, the shortcut. Okay. Uh -huh. This one is, look, guys. Look, guys. This one is C. It has one hydrogen, I think. It has the OH, I think. And it has this. One, two. Did I? No, 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 no. It's supposed to be two, ne? It's supposed to be two there. I'm coming, ne? CH. You're so confused, ne? I'm coming. And then this one, how many come on? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Then one, two, three, four. Okay? Uh -huh. C. Even this one is supposed to be two, no? It's one. Yes, it's one. No, it's fine. All right. Uh -huh. CH, the first one is, I'm going to explain, eh? So that you get it clear. CH2. This one is having OH. I see. So it has... Okay, let me, it's one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's fine. Let me do it like that. I've added more than what is needed. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'd use the five, ne? So, it's going to be CH, it has a side group. It has a side group there, CH. Okay. Those are the three. This is primary, this is secondary, this is tertiary. Ne? Primary alcohol, the carbon atom with a functional group, it has two hydrogens. You remember? Sandile. Primary alcohol. Carbon atom. 
This is the type of alkyl or a class of alkyl whereby the carbon atom with the functional group, with OH group, has two hydrogens. I think. Or you can define it in terms of carbon atoms. This is a type, is a class of alkyl whereby the carbon atom, this carbon atom with this OH group, is attached to one alkyl group. One, one alkyl group. So one carbon alkyl. atom. You see? It's only one carbon atom attached. So alkyl. 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 This, this. Because we don't know how many carbon atoms are there. Ne? No, alkyl. Alkyl. A side group. We call it alkyl group, which is an alkyl, which is um, only carbon, hydrogen and, 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 and carbon. And then now, when you come here, check the, fun the, the, the carbon atom with the functional group is this. I think. How many hydrogens are attached on this carbon atom? Check. How many hydrogens? So it's the type or is a class of alcohol whereby the carbon atom with the functional group is attached to one hydrogen. While this one, check. The carbon atom with the OH group or the functional group, is, it has no hydrogen. I think. So primary has two hydrogens, yes? Secondary has one hydrogen, and tertiary has no hydrogen. But don't say it's alcohol whereby it has no hydrogen. Where? You have to specify that there is, a, is a class of alcohol whereby the carbon atom with the functional group or the carbon atom with the OH group is attached to two hydrogen Atoms, is it clear? Mm -hmm. Then here uh, is the type, is a class of alcohol whereby the carbon atom with the functional group is attached to one hydrogen atom. And then here is is the type is a class of alcohol whereby the carbon atom with the functional group or with OH group is attached to no hydrogen atom. Yes. Mm -hmm. Number three, this side. This side. Four carbons. One, two, three, four. Yes. They're what? How? One, two, three, four. Oh, then it means that one must be go. This one in the middle. Yeah, let me just rub off this and then I just put the hydrogen. Sorry, ne? maybe just didn't count properly. So now, guys, come back here. What I told you at the beginning about the side group. This is not a side group. Well, this is a side group. This is not a side group. What well, this is a side group? No. This is not a side group. It's just condensed. But this is a side group. You see? Here, I don't have a side group here. But here I have a side group. Yes, because of this, it shows it's a side group. But because of this, it means that this one, if it has two, 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 two hydrogens, it means that it has two extensions. But if it has three hydrogens, it only has one extension because it's supposed to be with the four. So it means that it is attached here. Well, this one is just an extension. So this one, I can also write it in another way. How? How do I write it? I can just do this and I just say CH2, CH3. It's the same thing. You understand? It's the same thing. Yes. So, it's just sometimes you just write this to confuse you or just to condense or to see that you guys, you understood. Remember, science is not about cramming. You have to understand the concept. And once you know the concept, then you'll be able to know. Now, sister, you talked about the position isomer. You talked about what? Position isomer. Same structure formula, but different position of the what? Of the functional group. Is it clear? This and this are positional isomers. This and this are positional isomer. While this and this, they are structural isomer. I think this and this are positional isomer. While this and this a structural isomer. Chain isomer. It's the same thing. Structural isomer, chain isomer is the same thing. Ne? How? 
I was expecting you to tell me, to ask me, how? How, how comes here? Positional isomer. The, the functional group, the position of the functional group is changed. Same structure formula, but different position of the functional group. When we count here, we see that one, two, three, four. Or oh, one, two, three, four. Here, when we count from this side to this side, it's going to be on carbon atom number four. While this side is going to be on carbon atom number one. Is it clear? So we take the position in number one because it's less than four. Is it clear? So here, the OH, uh, I'm going to say one all. Isn't it? One. But yes, one all. Porpan one all. For example, butan one all. So it's which one means the position. <laughs> While here, one, two, three, four. So here it is on carbon atom number two. Why this one? One, two, three. This is three. So because two is less than three, then we're going to say two. So this one is going to be two all. Why this one is going to be one all. You see that the position of OH is different. Are you seeing? So changing, note on this. Changing primary alcohol into secondary alcohol, it makes positional isomer. Primary alcohol, secondary alcohol. Definitely is going to become a positional isomer. If they, you're given a primary alcohol and they want you to write a pos, an isomer, a positional isomer, definitely you just change it. You change it from primary alcohol to secondary alcohol. Definitely it changes the position of the what? Of the functional group. Is it clear? Now, now I said this and this, they are chain isomers or structural isomers. Why am I saying that? Here, one, two, three, four. So this one is on common atom number what? One, two. Isn't it? Isn't it? Common atom number what? Two. So it's going to be two all. Something, something, two all. Isn't it? Then what about this? One, two, three. One, two. So either way, it's two, two. Ne? So it's also this one is going to be two all. This one also is going to be two all. You see that the position of the functional group is the same. But if you look at the chain, is different. You see? The chain is different. That's why you're saying that it is a chain isomer. You understand? Well, this one is a functional isomer. The chain here has changed. You understand? But the position of OH is the same. Okay. So from secondary to tertiary is. Yeah, if, if you don't change, it can be still position depending on how many carbon atoms do you have. Yes, but in most cases, it can be um, a chain isomer if the position of the OH is not changed on the carbon atom uh, 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 which, which has the functional group. Yes, I saw the hand somewhere. Uh -huh. So, so um, the chain isomers, mm. the names also change. Yes, the all of them, they change. The naming will change, but the number of carbon atoms and stuff they remain the same. Let's, let, let, let's name them. Let's name them. This is what? One, two, three, four. Ne? One, two, three, four. So this one is carbon atom number one. Isn't it? So it's going to be one, two, three, four. It is four is what? Remember, when from alcohol, we add up to here. We don't only stop here. Ne? Butane, but it's on carbon atom number one. One and alcohol, we add OL. So it's going to become butane, one or. No, it's, it's one, two, three, four. There are four. Prop is three. Yes. Now, what about this? What about this? Uh oh. Is it beauty? Yes, it's beauty. One, two, three. One, two. So it's coming atom number two. Ne? So it's going to be one, two, three, four. It's going to be beauty, butan, two, all. You see, the position has changed. That's why we say positional isomer. Uh -huh. What about this now? It's going to be uh -huh. 1, 2, 3. I think so. It's going to be propan, pro, pan. Uh -huh. It is on carbon atom number what? 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. It's the same thing. So it's going to be propan, 2, all. Now let's look at the side group. So it's going to be? It's going to be 2, but how many carbon atoms are they? It's 1. 1 is meth. So it's going to be 2 meth, but when you, it's a side group, we add YL. Therefore, it becomes 2 methyl. Is it clear? 2 methyl, 
propan to or. Is it clear? Sister, you, you record, you note down what you, rem you should remember. We are doing this not because you don't know. No, man. Not because we, they didn't teach you. No, man. We are not here for that. We are here just to remind ourselves and to shorten the time of revising. You understand? Because when you do this, when you open, you remember. You watch a video, which we, where, because you're going to be there on YouTube. Simple. So your life becomes easier for you to write the what? The paper. The paper can't kill you. You must kill the paper. Any question before? Yes. Someone is saying, uh, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Guys, we need distinction, eh? Need distinction. You guys, you need distinction. You need distinction more, more than I do, ne? Yeah. I think we have talked about that. Uh, we have talked about all of that. Uh, I think now there are some few things we're going to talk about. Ne? Uh, let's remind ourselves uh, before we go to rest of reaction. Let's remind ourselves about uh, about uh, about um, about uh, we are done with the alcohols. Ne? Let's go to Carbonyl compounds, and then we see how do we uh, name it. Just ne? remember if you know how to name it, it's simple. Then we go to the esters, we look at esterification, done. Then after that, we see some few equations, ne? and then we wind up with the different the properties. And then we know that organic chemistry is done. I give you a break of uh, maybe 10 minutes just to stretch. Then we come back for rest of reaction, and then also talk about the. Um, 10 minutes just to stretch yourself and then we come back for rest of reaction and also chemical equilibrium then you go home yes speak what's so early you think you, we are saying it you think that it's gonna be ending now now hey <laughs> you think it's gonna just end now now it's easy to say but to present it on the board Yes. Yes, it's just it's just to <laughs> Now, let's talk about carbonyl compounds. Remember carbonyl compounds are grouped into two which are ketones and aldehydes, ne? And then um ketones and aldehydes. Ketones and aldehydes. Ah, remind me. What is... Eh? No, 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 no. We are still on organic chemistry. Structures. Ketones and aldehydes. Ne? We said that ketones, uh, where, where, where do you find the functional group? At the end. At the end. Serious? Where? Along the what? Along the molecule. Eh? So if I have CH3, CH2, CH... CH1, 2, no man. 1, 2, yes. CH2, CH3. Ne? When we maximize it or we write the structure formula, it's going to be like that, isn't it? Let's label it. Let's name it. I pack name it. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be? One, two, three, four, five. Pent. Remember, we don't stop on pent. Pent, we add a N. Ne? And then now, what is the position? One, two, three. 
one two three one two three so the direction is is equal eh? if it was two here then it's one two one two three so i go with the two but now it is not that it is so it's gonna be one two one two three uh-huh how do we do the ending keton ends with this one is it clear so it becomes penten one on why one <laughs> because that's the ending that, that's the ending oh did i say one one two three is three ne? it can't keton can't be one it will never be one it will never what no the reason why i wrote one there the reason why i wrote one there no it my maybe it was in my mind i said one Yes, eh? Keton will never ever be one. You understand? It will never. The moment is one, it becomes an aldehyde. Because it's at the end or it's at the beginning. You understand? So it starts with two. So it's gonna become penten three on. Yes? Um also this is correct depends on depending on your your teachers ne? so if you say but I, I want you to go with this ne? yes uh -huh. uh -huh. you can also say three dash pentanon is also correct so I don't know what your teachers taught you but this is correct also this is correct but we prefer this i i i prefer this yeah is it clear yes uh -huh. so now well, let's convert this uh this is this into a functional isomer which is the aldehyde remember alde Hides, they end with a l. You understand? They end with what? A l. So it must have that at the end. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna put this at the end. Ne? So it's gonna be CH3, CH2, 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 COH. Uh -uh. Yeah. This hydrogen is attached on hydrogen. This, this hydrogen is attached on the carbon. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's going to be penta. Then I add AL, which is pentanal. We don't have position because it's always at the end. You can't say pentanal 2, pentanal 3. No, man. It's AL. CHO. Yes. So it's pentanal. We don't have the position on the aldehyde. The same thing, we don't have a position on the carboxylic acid. Is it clear? So basically, that's how we can write uh, this. Let's, let's go to the carboxylic acid because the way how we may name carboxylic acid is an esters is a little bit different from this. From the normal, normal what? Normal naming. Can I rub off here? Chaka. Are we together? Are you getting something? Are you wasting time here? Oh. Litabo. 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 You know when you tabo in you a soldier, eh? Say. When the when, when, when the, 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 the captain say, Litabo, yes, sir. So I'm the I'm the captain. Litabo. 
<laughs> you can say yes, sir. Uh, it's nice to be a soldier, ne? Uh, oh, yeah. They say, say, come here, yes, sir. <laughs> yes, life is good, ne? Yeah, yeah there is no if all human beings were like soldiers, ne? This world will have been peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, soldiers, they are the most disciplined yo, organ. Yes. It's the most, it's the organ of the country. Hi, you guys. Yeah, we have different organs. <laughs> All right. Huh. Let's look at the carboxylicity and what? And what? Esters. Who is Esther? Who is called Esther here? Esther. There's no Esther here. Uh, there is a girl called Esther. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh -huh. uh, Carboxylic acid is one, CH3, CH2, CH2, COOH. Remind me, how do I end with the carboxylic acid? Oik. 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 Not enough. It's not enough. Oik acid. Acid. It ends with what? Oik acid. Uh -huh. Now, let's say, let's say, um, one, two, three, four. This one does not have a position. Is it clear? It doesn't have what? A position. So it's one, two, three, four. Isn't it? So it becomes, it becomes, one, two, three, four. It becomes buta noic acid. Simple. Sisters, when you see double O, that is either a carboxylic acid or an ester. If it's at the end, it's a carboxylic acid. If it's at the beginning, sorry, it's a carboxylic acid. If it is along the molecule, then it's an ester. Yes. So the oic acid, acid is acid. Oic acid. acid. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. Now we have. Now let's convert this into a functional isomer, which is. Uh, let me say. Let me separate it by this. CH three, CH two, C, O O C H three. Isn't it? One two three four. Now, yes, it's four. One, two, three, four. Guys, don't forget about this. Let's expand it. Ne? Let's expand it. Let's expand it. Structure formula. Isn't it? Now it's like that. How do you write this? Which one is the main or the mother, and which one is the side group? I told you. So I have one, two, three, one. Which one is the main chain? Uh -huh. The carbon atom which has the double, the, the, the carbon atom which has the oxygen, the double bond, it becomes the main chain. It means that this one came from the carboxylic acid, while the other one came from the alcohol. You understand? So it means that I'm going to say one, two, three. Three is what? Oh, how does uh, esters end? Oh, wait. Oh, wait, ne? Yes, they end with oh, wait. Oh, wait. Oik is carboxylic acid. Esters is O8. So now it's going to be 1, 2, 3, which is buta no wait. Hey, 3, ne? Not 4, ne? Okay. Pro, pa, no wait, ne? Now, this one is what? 1, which is meth. 
So it's going to become methyl. Here we don't have position. We don't have position. We don't, we don't put any figure anywhere in carboxylic acid and esters. We don't put anywhere. So it becomes methyl propanoid. Is it clear? What if? What if? You might look at it as if it is the same, but it's not the same. Ne? What if it's like this? CH. How do I label that? How do I name it? Which one is the which one is the main chain and which one is the side group? Let me even add another one. Huh? Is it possible to to do a side group in a side group? Like you see the fingers to move. I have another side group. Yes, but not in our level now here. It's very possible. Eh? How do I where is the side group? I have one, two, one, two, three. Or run smooth. Where's the main chain? Where's the main chain? Yeah, this is the main chain, eh? All right. Eh? Yes. Because of this, then it becomes the main chain. Isn't it? Uh-huh. And then this one becomes the side group. Isn't it? All right. Now people are thinking of side cheeks. <laughs> uh, so now what is, how are you going to, 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 to label it or to name it? One, two. It's going to be? Ether. No, wait. But the side group, one, two, three. So it's going to be, three is what? Pro. Pile. So it's going to become pro pile, ether, no, wait. Is it clear? But a question can come. Which one is the which one is the is the functional group? Functional group of alcohol is OH, ne? like that. What is the functional group of carboxylic acid? Carboxylic acid. Is O O O H C O O H C it must have a dash, ne? C O O H, ne? And then esters? C O O H? Eh? C H? Never. Okay, guys, if you are confused, ne? If you are confused with that, use R. Just put R there, R there. Which means that this is an alkyl group. We don't know how many carbon atoms are there after this. Ne? Yes. But this one, it must end with it. Even this one, you can put R there. You understand? Yes. This is an ester. Even this one, you can put an R there. You understand? We don't know how many carbon atoms are there. Yes. C. O H. No, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Ne? It's the same thing. So it's like that. Or you just write C O O Yes. So uh, basically that's it. That's uh, about the naming Unless you have any question, Itavo, unless you have any what? Have any question? If you don't have any question, uh, you tell me, and then I continue. I continue. I continue. I continue. Yeah. Life is good, ne? Ash, life is good, ne? Life is good, guys, ne? Is life good? Who is saying life is good? 
Life is not good, ne? Don't really, ne? <laughs> you are still a student. <laughs> what about when you become a father? <laughs> Life is not good when you are a student. <laughs> when you become a father, you will know that, hey, guys, life, yeah. If you want life to be difficult for you, be stiff in this world. Don't be flexible. Don't fit in any environment. Yeah, you'll see how life is it. But if you want to be simple, easy, if you want life to be like that, just relax. Be flexible. You understand? Yes. Go with the, the flow. Then, ah, you'll see that. Ah, you'll see that life is going to be easier for you. Ne? Yes. All right. Uh, let's just talk about, uh, you remind me, ne? just a uh, few reactions on the properties. Ne? Properties. Guys, in this section, I don't expect you to have any, anything related to a cross in your marks in that section. Yeah, in this part, we are finished. I don't expect you. A cross where? The only thing why you get those crosses is because you are rushing. When you see the paper, you get excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, so I, I know this, I know this. I know this. And you know the, what next? If you overspeed where you're not supposed to overspeed, what happens? Accident. So you end up having accidents in your papers. You come out of the paper, hey guys, I've killed the paper. <laughs> Can't the what the paper is what? Hey, hey, hey. All right. Hey. Remind me, guys. Um, okay, we have talked about that. Let's talk about. Okay. I think let's start with this esterification thing. Uh, guys, remind me. <clears throat> what is the function of alkenes? Alkenes, alkenes, alkenes. What's the function? What are paraffins? What is it for? It's used for fuel, ne? Okay. I'm going to ask you a question you prepare, ne? It's about polymerization. Ne? Uh. Yes, it's about. Now I'm just going to look at the different equations, ne? but I'm not going to look at all of the equations. We are just going to look at equations which are. Um, okay, you have what you call hydrogenation. Hydrogenation, hydration, um, hydrohalogenation. Yes. Those terminologies. They are under, under, under addition reactions. Ne? Mm -hmm. Those terminologies will determine what you add. If you see water is being added, then it becomes hydration. Isn't it? Hydration? Yes, hydration. If you see water is being removed, you form a product as water, then it becomes dehydration. dehydration. You understand? Mm -hmm. If you see hydrogen is added, then it becomes it becomes hydrogenation. hydrogenation, hydrogen, hydrogenation. When you see hydrogen is being removed from the equation, then we say what? The hydrogenation. Is it clear? What about the uh, hydrogen halides? Hydrogen halides, like hydrochloric acid, but hydro. Um, uh, uh, hydrofluoric acid, um, hydrobromic acid. So is it when you add a hydrogen and a, a group 7 element, then it becomes hydrohalogenation. When you remove it, you see as it as a product, then it becomes the hydrohalogenation. Is it clear? But note on this. Please and please. Make sure that you read about their conditions. Is it clear? So the only two 
equations I'm going to talk about, they're going to be for esterification and polymerization. Esterification and polymerization. Is it clear? But before I go there, I want you to tell me what is a saturated compound and what is an unsaturated compound? And how do we identify them in exam? What is a saturated compound? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I wanted to say that. <laughs> Your marker has gone. It was going. Yes, yes, yes. It must, it must have saturated compound. These are compounds which have a single bond between the carbon atoms throughout. And then unsaturated compounds are compounds which have double bond between the what? The carbon atoms. How do I identify a saturated compound? No, man. I'm talking about between how do I differentiate? I bring a solution here. I bring a solution here. One is a saturated compound. One is a saturated what? An saturated compound. How do I identify in a lab that this is a saturated compound, this is an unsaturated compound? Saturated is thicker. Uh -uh. In a lab. So, so we're doing it, remember, it, it, uh -huh. it left like something like a recipe. Uh, yes, but, but, but I want to know in a lab, what do we use? <laughs> Color? Uh -huh. How? When is pink? When is white? Hey, guys, stop it. That's only what I told you. Oh, okay, so you put, you put um, sulfuric acid. Who? Who? That's only what I told you. You put you. some powder, then? You put some powder. That's only what I told you. So, to be you, you have to be Guys, I told you. Now I see now. You are just guessing. I told you that we use bromine water. When it decalizes bromine water, it is unsaturated compound. Okay. When it doesn't decalize bromine water, it is a saturated. Yes, it decalizes. Remember, bromine is red. Yes? When it decalizes bromine water, it is a saturated compound. Huh? No, it's unsaturated. It's unsaturated. Let me write it on the board through equations, and then you see. Because now I see people, they have forgotten. <laughs> Uh, it decarlizes bromine water. Yes. So they can bring an experiment and say that compound A decarlizes bromine water. Compound B does not decarlize bromine water. Which one is a saturated compound? Or which one is an alkene? Or which one is it based on, on the table they have given you? So you look at the table, you see whether it has a double bond or a triple bond somewhere. Once you, it has, then it means that that is um, an saturated compound. Is it clear? So let's write it uh, by equation, and then we see exactly what happens. If, if you have, for example, CH3, CH double bond, CH, CH3, ne? that is an alkene, alkene. Ne? Even if it is CH3, C triple bond, C, no man. CH3. Ne? I add bromine water. Remember, bromine is a diatomic molecule. Ne? Plus, this is this this is a liquid, ne? This is a liquid. It's red. Red in color. Red, ne? You understand? Now the reaction is gonna take place, and then I'm gonna have this bromine is gonna split, and then one bromine is gonna come here, one bromine is gonna come here, and then it becomes saturated. So it's gonna have CH3, CH, um, CH, ne? and then a bromine, and then a CH, a bromine, another bromine, and then um, uh, CH. So, which kind of of reaction is this? This is addition. I've added. Therefore, it becomes what am I adding? It becomes halogenation because bromine is a halogen, is a group seven element. Therefore, the reaction becomes halogenation. Is it clear? The reaction for that becomes 
is halogenation. The reaction is halogenation. I'm adding a halogen in the reaction. Yes. So when I expand, ne, it's going to be. Hey, hey, hey. I see that people have forgotten something. Ne? If I put the bromine there, another bromine there. Done. So now this one, this one is colorless. That's why you say it decolorizes the bromine water. Is it clear? The same story, this one is going to be. But now, this one is going to change from a triple bond to a double bond. So that when I add more bromine, it's going to be decolorized more. From now, from a, a, a double bond to a single bond. Colorless. Colorless. Mm. Hydrohalogenation if born. Hydrohalogenation if I had hydrochloric acid or bromi, bromic acid. A hydrogen and a bromine. You understand? Is hydrohalogenation. But here I'm only had adding bromine eh? or group uh, seven watt element. Therefore, it becomes halogenation. So if I'm removing, then it becomes dehalogenation. Is it clear? Yes. There's something you guys, I'm, I, I'm thinking you forgot it. And I need to talk about it before I go to, 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 to polymerization. What's that? Makoniko fluid. Makoniko fluid. Ah, now, <laughs> I didn't teach you this, ne? <laughs> Hey, life is good, ne? All right. Oh. Hey. Remember we said that when you are adding a compound with a hydrogen, yes? Either you are adding, it, is, it, 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 it usually happens to hydration and hydrohalogenation. Because hydration, remember, you have this. OH plus a hydrogen. These are the molecules you are adding. And the hydrohalogenation, you are adding maybe a bromine, yes? And then you're also adding a hydrogen. So these two. Makonikov says that when you are adding these molecules, ne? hydrogen will go to a carbon atom with a high number of hydrogen. You remember? Now you remember. <laughs> oh, I remember. Hydrogen will go. I'm going to give you an example. Don't worry. Hydrogen will go to a molecule which has a high number of hydrogen. And then this one will go to a molecule, not a molecule, basically, to a, to, to a, a carbon atom which has less number of hydrogen. So hydrogen will go to a carbon atom which has more hydrogen, while this one will go to a carbon atom which has Fewer hydrogen. This one. All right. Let me give you an example. Can I rub off here? Huh? Uh, I had that. So. It goes where? It, it, hydrogen will go to a carbon atom with a high number of hydrogens. You understand? Yeah, you might not understand it now, for those who are not in my class, but let me give you an example. You understand it better. Now, let me think about the equation I should give you. Uh -huh. CH3. CH three, uh, uh, it can't be two, huh? It can't be C H ne C H. Eh? 
I sing it. I sing it. Oh, yeah. I sing it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now I add. Should I add bromine? Hydrobromic acid. Yes, All right. Now, hey. now let's 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 expand it, ne? so that we split it and then we see how does Markov uh, talk about this. This one, this one, is 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 just it it happens. The moment you add, it's like putting food in the mouth. You don't tell the mouth, hey, chew, ah, ah. It knows what it's gonna do. The moment you put the food there, it's just enough. You don't need to push, hey, eat. There's no sick people here. Ne? This is not sick, ne? It's normal. Just bring a pizza, put in the mouth, enough. No, you know why I'm talking about pizzas always? It's my sons. They ask, Daddy, pizza. Pizza. All right, all right, all right. You're also saying pizza every day. Yeah, yeah. You're always saying pizza every day. Hey, wait. Pizza. Yeah, you must say that. Pizza. Will you buy pizza? Yes. No, when I see Max, say, okay, guys. Here is the pizza. Yeah. When I see Max, but if I don't see Max, uh, I say pizza where? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, guys. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now, look. You have this molecule, this carbon atom, and this carbon atom. This one has one carbon. What this one, sorry, one hydrogen. What this one has? Two hydrogens. I think. This one has two. This one has one. I think. Makonikov says that this hydrogen will go to a carbon atom with the more hydrogens. So it means that when I'm writing the equation there, this one is going to obtain an, the, third, the third hydrogen. While the bromine is going to go to the one which has fewer number of hydrogen. Therefore, the reaction, when the reaction completes, then you're going to have CH3, uh, CH2, you see? Okay, let me uh, draw it the way it is. CH3 here. Uh -huh. Now, see, you have the hydrogen there. Now, this is going to go here. And then I have bromine here. And then I'm going to have CH. This is 2. And then this this hydrogen is going to come there, and then I'm going to have CH3. So that's how it's supposed to be. If you swap them, you're going to get a zero. Because this becomes a minor product, this one becomes a major product. When you swap them, it becomes, you put this one here, this one here, it becomes a minor product. It, it, it happens in a reaction, but is a minor product. So when you are writing this organic molecules, remember, we are synthesizing. We are synthesizing maybe medicine or what. So what we are looking for is a major product. Therefore, we are looking for the major product. Unless the question comes for a minor product, which is very rare. But if you are looking for a major product, even if they don't tell you whether it's a major product or a minor product, you have to use Makonikov rule so that you get this right. Yes? Where does the double bond what? It's here. It breaks. This one comes this side. This one comes this side for the hydrogen. This one attaches the hydrogen. This one attaches the what? The bromide. So and then you form. Remember, a carbon atom cannot have more than four bonds. So, one, so one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Always when you write a structural formula like this, count the number of carbon atoms. Sorry, the number of bonds on carbon atoms, they must be four. If it is short than four, you just know that your, your structure is wrong. Yes? So, so this uh, microtech yeah. always breaks the Yes. Yes. So this happens with the, this or when you are doing 
hydration. Because hydration also has the carbon, sorry, it has the hydrogen and the OH. So the OH will come here and the hydrogen will go there. Is it clear? Yes. Are we done with this? I said before I go to esterification, before I go to polymerization, did I talk about esterification? Okay, let's talk about esterification, formation of esters. Ne? Because those are some of the reactions where students struggle. Do you understand? Yes, and I don't want you guys to what? To struggle. Ne? Yes. Don't want you guys to struggle. The, but you have said it. I've said it. I've never seen it, but you have to know how to apply it. Ne? But if they ask, then you have to say it. Just say how the, the, distrib the, the, the description. Yeah. All right. Uh, Chaka, are you okay now? Because you, 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 were, you, were, you, were, you, were, you were not fine when I told you that come attend chemistry. Don't worry about Mr. Muhammad. Mr. Muhammad is going to come. This is what he wants. You cannot be writing physical science on Monday. You wrote met, and then you go for met today. You understand? Yeah. 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 He, he's also a human being who wants kids to pass. You understand? Yes. You saw him. He came and said, yeah. As long as you are here, you understand? Yes. All right. All right. All right, guys. All right, guys. All right, guys. Uh, let's just talk about esterification. Esther what? Is the what? <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of you are gonna be soldiers. You must be soldiers. Yeah, protect our country. Ne? Protect our country. Chaka, eh? you don't want to be a soldier. You want to be a doctor, ne? You can be a doctor who is a soldier. Who treated you, you treat the soldiers who are wounded in the battlefield. You see, yeah. Number one, you are getting money, ne? a lot of money. Not only that, you are helping the people who help the country, who protect the what? The country. You can be a soldier, ne? yeah. You can be a soldier. Huh? Why do you have soldiers? <laughs> I'm sorry to say so, but. If you want to know why do you have soldiers, that question will be answered by Ukrainians. Yeah, Ukrainians. You see how much they need soldiers? How much they need soldiers? No, they have, but not enough. You understand? I, I don't know too much of politics, but you have, soldiers are supposed to be there to protect the country. Guys, let's come back here. Let's come back here. Let's come back here. A hey, practical. Wednesday. Come back here, guys. Come back here, guys. Esterification. That's where is that's where esters are being formed. But during this process, you have to know exactly what is the raw material and what is the product and what are the conditions. Is it clear? Raw material, reagents which are needed, conditions and the products. Remember we can change whatever we change but we end up having the same product but the product will be corresponding with the raw material. So in esterification, what do you need? Number one, I want the reagents. You want the, you need the carbo, 
ziliki asidi plus alcohol giving you conditions conditions it must be it must be strong acid it's not enough no 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 i'm talking about the acid that strong acid is not enough i need to hear something you see this acid it's not enough still no i want to talk about acid strong acid that statement is not enough it won't make you to earn a tick concentrated that word must be there because you have dilute and concentrated that acid must be concentrated acid is it clear eh elijah do you understand it must be what concentrated acid so if i say sulfuric acid it must be conk sulfuric acid this sulfuric acid does not stop there it requires heat it requires what heat for the reaction to take place then after that remember this esterification it 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 results in it results in uh 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 in it's a dehydration reaction did you know that Sorry, esterification mm -hmm. is a dehydration reaction why am i saying that because you form an ester plus h2o you see you have formed the h2o therefore it is a dehydration reaction is it clear is it clear the moment you form water at the end it is dehydration yes it is. the moment you form water at the end it means that that water has been removed you understand yes so it is a dehydration um uh, reaction so now let's have an example of a carboxylic acid an example of an alcohol and then you form the ester and our our, our, our water there is it clear uh, tokero choose 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 any carboxylic acid you want choose choose yes huh Huh? Choose any carboxylic acid you want. Any carboxylic acid. No, just tell me. Just tell me what I write. Just say it by name. Propanoic acid. Saying propanoic acid. CH3, CH2, COOH. Propanoic acid. Chaka, choose any alcohol you want. No, man, I want... I want the name. I want the name. Propan to all. Ah, why do you want to that? That is too much. You said you said Eddie. You said Eddie. Propan to all. Propan to all. Yes, we can write it. But choose choose a primal alcohol. Propan one all. Propan one all. CH3, CH2, CO. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the problem is yeah, you students né, you like this complex thing né, complex when things when, when they put, no man oh. uh, uh. no 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 they are complex for you because you didn't practice questions I'm telling you no there are some things you bring whereby they can't bring for you not that difficult things. Do you know what question that is? I don't even remember. No. <laughs> we know. Huh? Okay. In presence of conch, sulfuric acid, and then we heat our thing. Remember, you know what we do, ne? We pour it, ne? <laughs> we pour it, ne? You know how what we do? You remember during the process of esterification? Yeah. yeah. yeah when we are when we are in the lab, ne? Yes. Uh -huh. Now after that. Now let's see how do we write remember remember guys this carboxylic acid is going to lose that while the alcohol 
is going to lose the H. You understand? These two, they combined form the water, which is there. And then now this and this, they combine to form the ester. Can I repeat? Yes. The carboxylic acid will always lose OH. The alcohol will only lose the hydrogen. These two. Okay, remind me. We are, we are, we are, we are reminding me about the um, alkane, alkene, and alkyne. Uh, if I write like this, um, C which, which uh, homologous series is this? Is that among the three? Huh? Uh, it must have another C there. Uh, yes. I think it's the last of the last of the Which one? Alkyne. Why are you saying alkyne? Guys, when you find this and you can't know it exactly, expand it. And then C, CH, because this one is CH3. You have there, you have there. Now, a bond goes here, isn't it? But here I don't have hydrogen, you see? Even the next one, I don't have hydrogen. And then the last one, I have CH and then three hydrogens. Are you seeing? Mm -hmm. If I have, I have no hydrogen here, what does it mean? It means that I have to make sure that there are four bonds. So I have, for this one is one, two. So I have to add another one. One, two, three, not yet four. I have to add another one. One, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. You see, now it means that the structure looks like this. Now you ask yourself, the one which has a triple bond is an alkyne. Why am I uh, doing this is because of the, sorry. Good morning, ma'am. I'm a so what I was saying, uh, last time they brought this question, and I saw that many people uh, failed this question. If the question is like this, CH3, ne? CH, CH2, ne? CH2, 2, two. Ne? CH3. What does it mean if it's like that? Remember in most cases we said that when something is in the brackets, it means a branch. But it depends on whether it's a when, when, when does it become